Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Whew, this is episode number six recorded today on, well, now July 14th at two in the morning. Um, I just had to make sure I had enough episodes to get me through tech some. <laughs> and then at least a week or two afterwards so that when I get back, I can record more. Or maybe I'll record more between now and then, just keep them in, quote, the can. I only have, um, I think, three more sets of wines to review. Anyway, um, I just didn't feel like doing all of them because the next set is six. Well, actually, the next two sets are three wines each. And then, actually, all three sets are three wines each. So I didn't want to do nine more wines tonight. I already did, well, a ton. Anyway, uh, let's get right into this. Um, this is uh, another Conchi uh, uh venture. This is a small production uh, wine uh, from them. Uh, and Jane uh, Kettlewell sent me this one from Creative Palette. So thank you very much again, Jane. This is the 2016 uh, Terruño uh, Sauvignon Blanc Block 5 from the Casablanca Valley in Chile. Bam, there you go. Um, it normally retails for about $26. So this is definitely not a cheap bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. I'm really excited to try this. Reading uh, the uh, bio of the uh, winemaker, um, where is this, Ignacio uh, Recabaren. Yeah, I did read how to pronounce his name in the uh, bio stuff. Uh, anyway, I love screw caps as we all know. So let's pour a little bit here. All righty. And yeah, I already gave the label shot of that. So um, so let's kind of talk about uh, uh, Ignacio. It's easier to say his name than the first name than the last name. Um, I mean, Recabaren. That's actually not hard to say. Um, he's kind of, they, they like to say he's either a um, revered, He's either a revered elder statesman of modern day Chilean winemaking or a crazy genius born rebel who will stop at nothing to make the wines he wants. Um, and honestly, reading his bio, um, that's pretty much, that pretty much sums it up. Um, he's been in the industry for 40 something years. Um, he's worked with some of the top winery people uh, in Chile, also uh, in California and uh, France and New Zealand. Um, so he's he's been all around. Um, Teruño, uh, at least the, how this is spelt, this is the anglicized version of the Spanish word Teruño, which means terroir in uh, uh, Spanish. Uh, instead of the N-Y-O, it would be the N with the little tilde over it and no Y. Um, let's see here. They make actually three reds, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Carmenere, and a Syrah, plus a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and they're all in that 20, well, actually, no, the reds are all around $40. So I'd be interested to try those two. Um, in the letter that they sent me, they said that they don't really get samples of these very often. Um, so uh, this is kind of a, kind of, I guess, a big deal to have a sample of this wine um, to be sent. And uh, I am looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, he's been winemaking for like 40 plus years. Well, right about 40 years now. And because uh, it said, uh, two years out of school in 1977, the young assistant winemaker joined the giant Santa Rita winery. So yeah, it's 2017, so 40 plus years. And like I said, he's been all around the world. Uh, they did ask him about like large winemaking and boutique winery. And he says that uh, even though it's under the Conciatoro umbrella, um, they are treated more like a, um, 
I wouldn't say boutique winery, but a smaller production, a smaller production wine. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm guessing they have a little little autonomy over there as to what's going on. The Casablanca region is in the uh, is north of Santiago in Chile. Um, uh, so it is a is another um, appellation uh, rather than just you know generic Chile and or Maipo or whatever. So let's get right into it. Woo! I'm already liking this. Pyrazines for days. <laughs> so yeah, um, actually just, just lots of green pepper, fresh cut bell pepper. Like, I mean, like my eyes almost want to water from it. Um, like I can smell the seeds on this. Um, and then I like to liken, you know, uh, uh, this type of wine, Sauvignon Blanc in general, uh, with, I call it Hawaiian pizza, but it has, to, it has to be, you know, Hawaiian pizza that has the pineapple and the bell pepper on it. So I get that touch of tropical fruit, pineapple more specifically, and the bell pepper. Um, but pretty much the bell pepper dominates this. Like, if I was in a blind, I'd be like, well, it's Sauvignon Blanc from the New World, probably. Like, just from the nose. But, um, yeah. I mean, I have this feeling of cactus. You know, maybe it's just because the, the pepper is so powerful and I'm trying to come up with some floral or some non-pepper non flavor, but it just... There, there is some other kind of um, um, aroma there that's kind of cactusy, I guess. And, and I, I can't remember the last time I've ever smelled a cactus or tasted a cactus or touched a cactus because um, they kind of got the little, little sharpy things on there. Not the, not the markers, you know, little things that are sharp. Um, but yeah, I just want to try this wine. Dude, I dig this wine. Man, what a great way to end the session of, of things. Starting with Don Melchor and ending, ending with this. Hey, Conchitoro bookends. That, granted, the vast majority of the wines I had today are Conchitoro. Um, and we've had a wide variety of likes and dislikes. We only really call them dislikes, but maybe not liked as much um, as, as some of the other wines. But... Um, yeah, I mean, this is unmistakably Sauvignon Blanc. You know it must be good if I'm contemplating a white wine. Yeah, and I just swallowed it. But then it gets the last wine of the night, and a lot of times I drink, I, I swallow the last wines of the night. Um, this is just damn good. Um, and it's room temperature, too, so I can only imagine. Granted, it mutes the flavors and the aromas a little bit with the chill, but, man, I could just, it's probably going to be just a touch smoother. Um, definitely good acid, good, um, you know, uh, yeah, high in the acid. But, um <sighs> My only thing about it is it's so over the top pyrazine. Um, it's got the pineapple. It's got some other fruit to it. It's got a. Um, it's really pineapple and 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 bell pepper. Um, the cactus maybe not so much. Um, little minerality to it, but it's just so overwhelming. I, I I don't want to call it an unbalanced wine, but it's definitely something that you're just like if you like these flavors. You will absolutely love this wine. If you don't like these flavors, you will absolutely hate this wine. I mean, this is, I'm going to say probably a very polarizing wine. I don't, I mean, there might be some people like, it's good, you know, and they like it. 
I, I mean, there might be some, mid, you know, in, in between people, but I think if this is the, you know, the, what you want to have a Savion Blanc, which I mean, it's to be expected, but it's so in your face that um, some people might be a little taken aback. But this is not—it's not like the, you know, and you get this from Savion Blanc. All right, so it's not like this is the only one I've ever had. Or only Savion Blanc I've had where I get that. Um, but it, sometimes these things are a little more subtle. With a little bit of, if it was a little bit cooler, it probably would not be as much in my face. But I, I just want to drink this whole bottle. I just want to chug this. I mean, not chug it, but I just want—I just want to experience that that intensity, um, like a lot. So I cannot wait to have time to sit down with this bottle and just enjoy it. Like I could just drink this by itself without any in question. Um, did I say it was $26? I don't remember if I said it was 26 bucks. It is worth every penny of that and more. Um, I mean, not quite a mic drop moment, but uh, like I'm just, I'm just excited about it. I, I really hadn't read the, the, the information really until just now. For, so I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea it was $26 either. I was just like, I don't know what this is. Kanji Toro, Terry, you know, Sauvignon Blanc. All right, well, whatever. And I read this and I was like, okay, well, this, you know, this guy should be pretty good, but let's, let's, let's see if the proof is in the pudding, right? It is. Good stuff. If you can afford $26, bucks, which, you know, not, not a cheap wine by any means, um, on a Sauvignon Blanc, and you see this, you need to get some. Now I really, Jane, I really want to try those reds. Hint, hint. Especially Carmenere. Come on. I guarantee that Carmenere's got to have just tons of bell pepper in it. Because that's what Chilean Carmenere is supposed to have. Um, and a Syrah. I'm like, are you kidding me? This guy, I, I yeah. He is on the bucket list of people that I want to meet if I ever make it down to Chile. You know, too, too little time, not enough money to go everywhere. All right, speaking of that, um, let's end this right now. Uh, buy it. Thank you all for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Click the link over there uh, to send me some ducats to send me to Chile or Burgundy um, to uh, try some of these wines and uh, the click, click the links below to uh, get more information about the winery and uh, the wines there. And um, we will, oh, I held back the yawn for so long. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we will see everyone again next time.